Amazing. That is amazing. 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 Isn't that amazing? That is amazing. So I got to tell you, this show that you're about to see now, it was like just put together because we didn't have anything else to do, right? We had a guest by the name of Judy Wood. And Judy Wood is an immigration attorney with a human rights project. So Judy was here. She came to the studio. Oh, yeah. She came to the studio and she was waiting in the, you know, the green room area there. And while waiting, she grabbed one of my books for Rage to Responsibility. See that brutal? That's me when I was young. I'm still young, never dying. But she grabbed this book and she was reading through it or looking at it. And my producer went out to get her ready for the show. And she was like, no, I'm not staying. I'm leaving. Why? Why? That's my producer. Why? Why? And Judy Wood said that he and I don't agree on anything or something like that. And so she walked out. Judy Wood of the Human Rights Project walked out on the taping before it happened. Now, you know, that's a beta woman, beta lady. And she called herself an immigration attorney. And what she tended to do, from what I read about her, is to help women come from foreign countries into our country. Those that are supposed to be under duress or something. Yeah. But I wanted to interview Judy. But Judy picked up this book for Race to Responsibility, and Judy ran. So if you see Judy Woods, immigration attorney with the Human Rights Project, ask her why did she run from Jesse Lee Peterson's show, The Fallen State. I thought women were supposed to be strong. We're strong. Women can handle anything. Apparently, she can't handle me. She cannot handle Jesse Lee Peterson. So Judy Wood is a coward. Beta lady! She ran before the show even got rolling. You ready? Welcome to the Fall of State. I am Jesse Peterson. Don't forget to uh, ring the bell and what else? Like. Like, follow, share. Tweet, share, and all that stuff, all right? Subscribe. Help with the censorship. So I put together my radio crew, and I want you to, on the fall of state to meet the radio crew, all right? I'm really ab living. I have no idea what I'm going to talk to them about at this point. My producer, Nick, and Nick is from Canada, an uh, anchor baby. <laughs> Born in Miami. <laughs> Aren't you an anchor baby born in Miami? I can neither confirm nor deny these allegations. <laughs> anchor baby! Habla <laughs> uh, español? No, only English. Uh, no English? Okay, how un poquito. You <laughs> so how can you understand if you speak oh, English? Oh, dang it. <laughs> you got me. And Joel is my audio engineer. He's also the owner of Dancing on Nails with Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new one. <laughs> close. You, close. The, call? the Gifted of Dance. You were this close. The <laughs> Gifted of Dance. It's his own company he started since working for me as my audio engineer. He's a part of our Barn Academy, Entrepreneur Academy. And so I grabbed him out of the studio. Hey, you got to come talk. All right? And then Hank of the Hank Report. Uh, At one time, he was a producer. <laughs> way back when. And uh, so now he has his own show, The Hake Report, and it's on Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific time, and Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. Pacific time. James Hake! Uh, not hate, but Hake. <laughs> and I apologize for his shirt. He was too buff to put on a different one. Yeah. <laughs> King of the cage. He wanted me to, <laughs> Jesse wanted me to put on a Christmas shirt. Like that. Like him, so I could be twins with him. You don't want to be, be twinning? Match. All the blacks want us to match. Well, that... Twins in the <laughs> face, but not in the waist. <laughs> anyway, we want to pass off as white. Huh? So they were going to wear Christmas shirts, and I was going to wear se no sex at a wet lap. <laughs> so what? Yeah, no, us Christmas? I or? didn't get the, the hit. <laughs> yeah, we'll do Christmas. I don't know what you're doing. No, you lied about the no sex at a wet lap. Nope. All <laughs> truth. All true. <laughs> so these guys are millennial guys, too, so it's pretty cool. So we want to say from all of us, from the radio show, the Jesse Lee Peterson radio show, that's on Monday through Friday from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. Pacific time, jlptalk.com, in case you don't know. Thank you all for uh, supporting us, really. You've been amazing with the radio show. 
James, anything you want to say thanks for to everybody? Well, yeah, I mean, thanks for tuning in to DLive and YouTube. And thank you for getting the Fallen State to 250,000 subscribers. That's cool. How about the radio show? The radio show is getting there. That's nice. We have 249 now. We're in 249 something. Yeah. Might be there when you, guys, when you guys see this episode. Might be 250. Maybe. Or maybe right. we'll, well, when they see the episode. Maybe it's not. Oh. <laughs> um, and the hate report, check it out. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for tuning and in. So are you a millennial? Yeah, I'm a millennial, but I, I relate to the ex people too because I'm an uh, older millennial. So you're like an old millennial. Yeah. You right at the end when it first started. Mm -hmm. And that way you'll be out soon. <laughs> out of millennial. Yeah, pretty soon I'll be a boomer. I'm basically <laughs> a boomer. I think that's how it works. And so what are you uh, grateful for? For this past year, uh, 19, 2019, what was it like for you? It was really fun. I got to, starting at White History Month 2019, thank you for the second annual White History Month. That was cool. Oh, yeah, it was amazing. In July, my birthday month. Uh, July is? Yeah. Uh, we the all whole month. To, we're happy to hear that. Yeah. And so <laughs> I started... <laughs> forget you. I started, <laughs> I started jumping on um, the fourth hour of your stream to do my daily show, The Hake Report, and that was fun to do. And James is the guy with the good hair. And I'm glad that you have Nick as producer because I had Daniel, who was a good producer, yeah. and then I, I lost think. him, and then it was a pain, and then Nick came in, and he jumped right in. And, he did an amazing and, thing. Are you married, for those who want to know? Nope, not Are married. you looking for a, a girl to marry? No, you say don't look for a wife. You were glad to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to be married? Maybe, yeah. You want kids? Maybe, yeah. You're not sure? I'm not sure. <laughs> we need white babies. I know. That's. I think it's. I think it's a setup. I think there's like a brainwashing culture in the white world, and maybe maybe all throughout America oh. that we grow up kind of selfish, not wanting to have to deal with kids. Amazing. Joel, uh, what are you grateful for? Um, I don't know. I was trying to think of some stuff while James was going. Um, I learned a lot what did in you 2019. Learn? Um, Joel is part Creole, uh, part white, 30% white, and the rest is black. Believe me. <laughs> Wait until you hear him read. You would know it's black. <laughs> um... I don't even know what I'm grateful for. I know 2018 to 19, you know, I started the, the company, the business, and just being a business owner and learning and growing and that has been different. But I don't know what I'm grateful for. Do you want to be married one day with kids? I hope to be. You hope to be? Uh-huh. And how do you see women your age? My age? Uh, Millennial women. There's not, what I will say. There's not a lot of women who know what what they really want in a man or themselves. Really. Uh huh. And why don't they? Wild. They're wild. Uh huh. The millennial women your age. Uh huh. Are wild in what way? And younger. Um, in a sense of th there's no self-control or direction on anything. Amazing. Are you and not all, of course, not all, but a lot of the ones I've been around. Are you going to be able to show them I what hope they to. need? I hope when I'm walking they see the halo. <laughs> <laughs> what is it like to be, how old are you? 28. And to have your own business. Um, I mean, it, I definitely see the responsibilities that that are put into place now that things I have to take care of that I didn't have to take care of before um, the extra work that needs to be put in so definitely the independence of having your own business are you surprised as a black man you know how they say black people <laughs> it's hard on a black man owner. in America are you <laughs> surprised to, to know that that's a lie that was a lie. It's hard on the black man. In oh my God. I, I even knew that that was, <laughs> even before I came to bond and understand, I never, I even knew that all that stuff was silly. Like, I've been pulled over before 
um, multiple times, and I never at one time thought it was because I'm black. I never even questioned it was because I was black. I, to me, that's uh, even since coming here, that's just been the silliest. <laughs> so you don't believe me? I you never know. thought about that. When no. you were stopped, did you have insurance and driver's license on it? A couple of times, I'm putting it all out there. <laughs> <laughs> a long time ago, I didn't have I didn't have uh, registration. A couple of times, and it got me, and then they let me go. Oh really? So I, were they white? there's another proof, and they're white. Black privilege. Wow. Right. So he said black privilege. <laughs> Maybe. Amazing. <laughs> and so Nick, you are from Canada. We met you from yeah. Canada, but you were born in America, right? I was. And how is it that you're an anchor baby then? Because my I was born in Miami, where all most anchor babies are born, <laughs> and because uh, <laughs> they, they swim over and they well not swim. But Your mama <laughs> swam over. Basically, bona fide border hoppers. Oh, okay. And then they had me here. And then, you know, uh, when, you, when you're born in America, you, you get citizenship. So I was born in Miami. And so I've, I'm an American citizen through that. So when your mama was swimming across, you were already pregnant? No. Well, at least from the story. The story goes that, uh, the story goes that I was conceived in America. Oh, and, oh, okay. As well. What is it like knowing that you're an ankle baby? For a while, I didn't think about it at all. Like, it didn't really, it's not something I really examined until I... One day I saw my passport, right? I was just like, kind of like chilling in Canada. And I saw my passport, I'm like, that's right, I could just go to America. And it and kind of started making me really think about it. And I heard, I heard someone say once about like, ser like serving two countries at once. And it's made me really think about it, like if you really can. It doesn't stop me from being an opportunist. I still have both citizenships, but <laughs> you oh, you know, it makes me wonder like, can you really serve two countries? Like, you have to pick one eventually. And so what do you say? I'm American. You're American? And I'm, then when you go home, about a one -way vacation, ticket. you say, I'm Canadian. And then Canadian. I'm Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> what is life, how is life different in America than it is in Canada? It is a little different. There's a few differences. Like, there's still, it's still like, there's still like Western, right? But it's things that strike, well, here's one that strike me as soon as I got here was, there's liquor, like in convenience stores, gas stations, everywhere. Oh, yeah? In Canada, liquor is like, uh, sold to you by the government. Really? You have to go to the LCBO, the luck boat, really? as we call it. I'm glad you don't live in Canada. <laughs> I've heard stories where they won't stop you if you steal it. If like, you steal the liquor? No, <laughs> they won't, actually. They'll let you walk out with it because of... Um, there's something about um, petty theft that's not being... I forget what it is, but it's something to do with the LCBO specifically and how they're not dealing with petty theft because someone got hurt. So Joel could be drunk one night and, and then decide he wants some more and, and, the per and realize, and oh, I don't have any money, and he can just go over there and steal a bottle? Well, the cashier will probably be like, oh, don't do that. But then they'll, then they'll <laughs> walk out. The they'll, try, they'll try a little bit, right? <laughs> really? Well, that's they'll call the cops. They'll here too now. Yeah. Because they passed a law in California that you can steal up to $900. And so I see people going in stores now and stealing. Very similar. As long as they don't overdo nine hundred dollars, they get away with it. They'll call the cops because the cops will take their time. Right. And then when they get there, you're already gone. They're like, oh, well, too bad. So you want to be married one day in a family and all that? I I I look forward to it if it happens. What's wrong with that? <laughs> <laughs> you can't picture it. Huh? You can't picture me married. It? Come on. You're a good father. <laughs> Yeah, you will be a good father. We husband, <laughs> but a good father. <laughs> oh. No, I'm kidding. So um, I want to ask you guys about this so-called impeachment thing. Let's see how you see it. Uh, Joe, what do you think about the fake impeachment of the president, the great white hope? Well, I didn't watch it. I didn't watch the thing. But I seen, like, a tweet where saw. he said, oh, I saw a tweet. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it like. Keep it like. <laughs> I saw a tweet. I don't know what the tweet said. Something about they're not after me, they're after you, but I'm just in a way. They're not after me, they're really after you. Right. I'm in the way. Right. It just reminded me how, like, you know, I haven't watched the impeachment thing. I didn't watch none of that stuff. But it just reminds me how, like, you know, the Democrats and all that stuff are putting all this stuff, piling all these things on top of the president. Like, we got him for this, we got him for that, da da da. 
And then he just throws out like these, at different moments, but just these subtlety things, and then like clears the water out the way. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like those are little things, and then it's like, it makes so much sense, these one-liners. And to me, it just seems like, you know, and then just from the things I've heard, there's no real grounds on, on really any kind of impeachment. It's just, right. you know, just, oh, I don't like how you said this, or this is that, and that. So I don't think it's legit. You said something the other day, you felt like you were in school, because you're learning so much without really going to school. Well, right, the fact that, you know, coming onto the, you know, on the show and being a part of the radio crew, you know, you hear all these news stories and stuff, and to be, to be honest, before I came to Bond, I didn't hear any, I didn't know anything about politics. And then when I found out Trump was running, it was like right when I came to Bond, it was like when Trump was running. And then everybody was like, oh, Trump is this crazy guy, and he's just, you know, he's wild, he's obnoxious. And I didn't believe, I believed into it, but I didn't really, like, make a big deal out of it. But now that I come here, I see, like, just certain things that I was just totally being tricked that people were telling me and what, what, what the internet was telling me, but being here is uncovering what was, what's really going on. Yeah. And now I can just see that the things that they were making a big deal out of weren't even true. All right. But it's just, yeah, I've been learning a lot. Yeah, you'd be a good husband, too. <laughs> I was thinking about it. I was like, how am I going to do the rest of this interview? I'm pissed off. <laughs> you can't say that. Oops. I thought it was Fall State. P.O.'d, P.O.'d. Oh, P-O'd Fall State, you can cuss. I'm peed off. You can curse on the Fall State. <laughs> Believe me. It's not a family show. What is it like <laughs> when you working as producer for Jesse Peterson? It's mind-blowing. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> it's like, well, first, of, you, you asked everybody else what they were grateful for. Yeah, what are you grateful for? <laughs> I'm, I'm grateful that I can't recognize who I was like a year ago, or at least somewhat recognize, right? Like, I look at myself, and it's just so many things I've had to, like, face. And it's just awesome, because... My life has changed so much, but um, being the pro being a producer is even it's just another level. It's like, <laughs> like I don't even know what can I even say about it. I'm in LA producing for Jesse. I've been watching you, right, like from Canada. All right. So it's kind of just totally mind blowing. <laughs> Are you surprised that I walk out the studio and on it? Uh, yeah, that's my nightmare. But was I surprised <laughs> that you do that? You know what? Um, I don't know if I. Here's let me put it like this. I'm not surprised that you discipline like your employees and stuff like that. So I don't know why I didn't expect that. <laughs> I should so have expected What I'm it. talking about, sometimes when the producer, uh, when the show doesn't go well, meaning that something goes wrong with the equipment or, uh, or the guest is not up to par or something goes wrong with that, I'm like, I'm out of here. I'm not doing this. Bye. And everybody, and the producer just trips out. <laughs> it's only a, it's a nightmare. <laughs> no, the first thing the first thing said is, did Joel press the wrong button? <laughs> That's the first thing. Then we go down the list. <laughs> so Joel normally, you know, he's black, and he has a habit of pressing the wrong button and things don't go well. I Am I right? I can't lie. Sometimes I press the wrong button. I can't lie. Yeah, That's amazing. But not all the time. Huh? Not all the time. Well, we said sometimes. But, but most of the time. <laughs> 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 and I'm like sweating. I'm like sweating. My hands get all like sweaty. Especially on Mondays. Yeah, Mondays are bad. Ra rainy days and Mondays always get us down. <laughs> Not anymore. You're trying to break that, right? Yeah. And so you've learned a lot about yourself. Yes. You overcome a Big lot. Big time. Are you able to tell us one or two sure. examples? Um, sure. You know what's a good one, actually? I'll give you a good one because it's one of those ex one of those examples of where where you think something has changed, but you hasn't, right. and you have to really examine yourself and admit what it hasn't changed. Right. For example, tripping out when people call stuff out about you. Oh, yeah. When people call, you know, stuff about you, just simple questions, because you ask simple questions, right? You ask simple stuff like, is this ready, is that ready? But someone who's not, sta who's not secure within is like, why are you examining me like that? <laughs> even though at one time I thought I even overcame that, it's just, it's kind of a blessing to like sit down, look at it, and be like, "Wow, it's not that hasn't that's still there." Yeah. So, tripping out when people call out Amazing. stuff about you. That's good. That's one. And so, what's your impression on There's this? So many though. What's your impression on this phony uh, impeachment thing? I'm, I'm pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> I got pretty. I got. There's moments I'm watching. 
and it, I, I have a scowl, but I try not to let it get to me too much. You have a scowl? Yeah, I'm just like kind of seething. I'm like I like this. <laughs> I like this, and I spit on the ground. <laughs> And um, I grit through it. No, but I, I, it's to me it seems obvious. To me it looks obvious how like because I've been looking at it, right? You know, I've been going through all the details, and right. it looks like a phony fake impeachment. And it's just it's kind of a sad time. It's kind of stupid to see how like a lie can be pushed like that. But I know, I just know. pushing a lie yeah. as though it's the truth, and then they act like we don't see that they're pushing a lie. And then I have friends, roommates, or friends and family call and be like. Oh man, that's crazy about this, that, that. I'm just like, I, I want to like, I have so much to like regurgitate, but I'm just like, they don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> did uh, um, did you think that the Democrats would go this far with it? No, I never expected anything like this. Are and you surprised? The whole thing is very surprising, very yeah. kind of shocking. Maybe you guys know about the Democrats better than I do, but this is insane. I'm not surprised they went this far. And they're not done yet. We haven't seen it between now and 2020, the election time. We haven't seen it. I believe that. They're going to do some stuff that we don't even know Satan has. Really, it's going to be shocking. We haven't seen anything. Are you surprised that the Democrats are doing this to the president and then playing Christian? <laughs> no, it's like more of the same to me. Like, I knew that it was coming. And... I had kind of stopped paying attention, so I might have, if I was watching it as closely as Nick was, then maybe I would have gotten mad, but I wasn't really watching it closely anymore. Yeah. I took a week off from looking at Drudge. You know how I read Hake News on your show? I took a week away from looking at Drudge, so I was looking at Fox News and just other outlets. And so like, it wasn't as organized, because Drudge just kind of organizes it nicely, <laughs> where I can just pull the headlines. But it was... I've watched Nancy Pelosi be, since being a fan of your show and then to becoming the producer of your show and then here now, I've watched how phony Nancy Pelosi has always been talking, like her stupid lines. And so I knew that they, I knew that they would, were gonna go after Trump eventually. And I knew that they were gonna find, and it just makes sense that they would find any excuse to do it and they got this excuse with this guy in the deep state, yeah. the CIA. And then also, um, it's just, they're, they're always really phony with the Christian thing. And you see, you've interviewed a ton of liberal Christians. Yeah, over they're the, like, I gotta pray on it. Yeah, this so is, I knew that it's really not surprising seeing how they are. <laughs> like, amazing. this is a somber time and right. <laughs> stupid. <laughs> And Nancy wore, Nancy wore, they all, I guess, wore black during the oh, here, right? <laughs> right. I mean, confirmation thing. And, and I guess Nancy had told the people not to applaud when she yeah. said confirm. And they started to applaud. She's like, She does her hammer, and then she goes, <laughs> <laughs> They're ruining the plan. I know. I and have, they're all scared of mama. <laughs> they are. She acted just like mama. Yeah. I told you to shut up. I told you to shut up. <laughs> um, I'm not surprised because I've said uh, over and over again that white people are afraid of black people. And I noticed that the more and more black people that go get into government, the white liberals are afraid to go against what they say. Yeah. And the uh, like reparations and all that. And uh, the black, the white Republicans are not going to say anything either. And so I think we're going to have, I know we're going to end up, unless America happens, we're going to end up with South Africa. In America, and white people, land will be taken, there'll be murder even more, so robbery, kill, and destroy, because the white people are afraid of the people of color. Yeah, you know, ever since the beginning, uh, Maxine Waters has been saying, impeach 45. Yeah, and the, then witch, the, the witch of the West <laughs> with the low IQ, Maxine Waters. And then that stupid guy, Al Green, Yeah, he's uh, he drew up articles of impeachment for when he fired Comey, which everybody agreed Comey should be fired. And the black, and then the um, Rashida Tlaib was like, "We're gonna impeach the MFR." To, I think she said it, said that she said it to her son. Amazing. Wow. And so, and she's yeah, not black, but she's a POC. So, you know, very unclassy lady. Yeah. I, I feel uh, the when you talk about South Africa coming here, a conservative will be the first to tell you, "Okay, don't go that far." Yeah. <laughs> All right, don't. That, that's crazy, dude. Well, that's and, obviously that. Yeah. yeah. 
So what else? Until it, it gets to that level. But can you see that it's coming? Or am I the only one? No, I can see what you're saying because Obviously. nothing's being nothing's being done about the stuff that's happening. People just push it to the side and say, oh, that's fine. That's just how they are. Or no one's confronting the issue, so they just let it go. If we had a white government, this would not be happening because white liberals and white Republicans fight them against this stuff, right? But because it's black and white, the white's not going to stop the black. Yeah, well, look, but, at, but, look at Steve King, Congressman Steve King. Yeah. He's like Western civilization. How did that become, how did that become such a bad thing? Right. Because he brings a Western civilization, they link it to white nationalism, white supremacy. And then the whole government, including himself, censures him for it. Right. And but, he voted against himself. But I feel like there's only a few whites like that who are going to be willing to do stuff. Like, for example, most, like, like we see, a lot of whites that we see are, are afraid to, to say certain things. So if whites were to take over, I, I still think we'd still have an issue in a different kind of way. Because they're still afraid to do things. But if they were not afraid and took over, we could save America. Right. Yeah. But if blacks weren't angry, then we can also save America. Are you afraid to be called a white nationalist? <laughs> <laughs> Which side do you identify? The dark side or the white side? 30%. <laughs> uh, I never even thought about that. You know they think you're Uncle Tom, right? Uh, yeah. And a sellout and a yeah. white nationalist. Yeah. Um, no, I don't think so. Oh. No. <laughs> Are you Nick? I'm a white nationalist. You're a white nationalist? If anyone asks. <laughs> Are you afraid to stand up for white people in the public? No. You're not one of No, I do, and sometimes to my detriment. Because there's times where you kind of should shut up. You what? <laughs> Isn't there times where you kind of should shut up? <laughs> but you stand up to what? Your well, detriment? sometimes people will just talk, like roommates or stuff, or they're, to my detriment is what I say. Oh, I but sometimes people will say, and I uh, they just say something, and it's like, then I out myself. <laughs> Have you ever been called a racist? Yeah, and a race traitor by Spanish, by Mexicans, by Latinos. Why do they call you that? They call me a race trader. Because <laughs> I'm supposed to be for La Raza. I'm really? Supposed to be for La Raza, I mean. No? And they, when they, do they think you are until you speak? Yes, because huh? I speak Spanish with them, and then the last name is Gonzalez, and they tell me, the illegals will tell me that they're illegal, no problem. You know. But they, but they don't know. They don't know you're legal. That I, that I would call ICE. Oh, that you, <laughs> <laughs> that you call ICE. So what's important to you? What's important to me? Dang. Hmm. Wow, what's important to me? Because there's so many things I could say, but I'm on TV. <laughs> <laughs> no, what's important to me, one, here's one thing that is important to me is uh, like when, when lies are said, like I have a hard time not correcting people if I know it's a lie. All right. So that's important to me. Cor like, Saying the truth, <laughs> correcting people's lies, <laughs> or maybe that's just me being like a know-it-all. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, say it. What's important to you, Joe? <laughs> um, I want to say what's important to me is trying to do what's right, but I don't think that it's a good thing. I don't think anything should be important to you, but it is important to me. To try to do what's right? Right. But I don't think why, that's good. Why shouldn't that be important to you? Because if anything is too important, you, you obsess over it. Oh, so trying to so, do what's right is too right, important to you? Because, yeah, I find myself sometimes obsessing over trying to do the right thing. And then you get caught up in your head trying to figure out, well, is this right? Is that right? And then you just, it's too important. So I don't think. When you say try to do the right thing, what do you mean? I mean, like making sure, because, you know, you. When you do some, when you know, you know, when you're trying to walk, you know, the right path, saying the words <laughs> I can come up with, <laughs> is that when, when you do the right thing, you see the results of what comes from doing the right thing. So you constantly want to do the right thing. But there's a, a danger of getting caught up in trying to do the right thing all the time instead of just living your life that um, it becomes too important to do the right thing. Oh. And it becomes an issue. And so when it get that way, do you start doing it wrong? <laughs> no, I don't, I don't think I started doing it wrong. I, I think I had to tell myself, relax. 
Oh. Yeah, just Amazing. chill. What do you think about what you just said? Relax. Yeah. <laughs> chill, Greta. Just chill. chill. What is no, it? I mean, <laughs> I mean, I, I, he was saying, while, while he was saying it, to be honest, I was just like, oh, I know what's something I care about. What? That's important to me. What? To, like a, something more honest. <laughs> what? Like, something more honest. Oh. Um, I think I care. I care what I think. Like, uh, like um, being liked, being liked, and I sometimes put too much importance to that. Being liked I'll and be like, light. and like seeming. What's the what am I like? Just being likable, I guess. I don't know. Something like that. That's real important to you at times. At times, yeah. Or being liked. Yeah. Likable. Yeah. Oh, I see. You think at times you're an unlikable person or something? Probably. I don't think about that too much, but oh. probably, yeah. Sometimes your hair looks like a Mexican hair, and sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> it looks like Mexican right now. Why? It's like whatever gene is being expressed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes it's just bed hair. Oh. It's just like pressed down. Sometimes right after a shower, I get that curly Chicano look, and then you're like, who's this Mexican? <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes I look like a white person. Do I? Your hair. Oh. <laughs> Does it really? <laughs> <laughs> What's important to you, James? Um, well, work and fun. Dang, I'm white. <laughs> <laughs> Look down at my arms. Yeah, your arms <laughs> the insides white. of my arms. Well, Maybe actually, that sun. size white, too. <laughs> not getting sun is not important to me, at least <laughs> lately. Can you get a close-up <laughs> shot? Maybe it should be. Okay. <laughs> Exercise, you know, that should be important. But, uh, but he's white too on his arms. We need a close-up shot. Look at that. Give me out of here. He's messy. <laughs> but go ahead. Um, fun. Does Joel look like an Oreo cookie in the middle? The reverse kind. Where it's the chocolate. vanilla on the outside and the chocolate on the inside. Oh, yeah. 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 You, ever been <laughs> in a hate, you ever been in a hate so, dissolve um, sandwich? What? Nothing. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. I can definitely relate to what he said. I was going to Subway, and I was at the crosswalk, and this white guy comes up to me, and he's like, I'm so done with this city. It's not <laughs> nice here. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, that's true. And then um, he walked up ahead of me, and he was like this weird-looking white guy. And I'm like, man, a lot of white... Uh, later on, I thought, a lot of white guys are weird. But he, I saw him ordering his food, and there was no desire to be liked that he was expressing, at least. <laughs> he was just being weird. And, but watching them, making sure they did it right, <laughs> put, pull out more of the bread. He's white. And then, He's white. <laughs> and then I do my thing. I'm like more likable. And I like smiling and stuff like that. So I think I have that too. Well, I know I have that big time. Oh. But I'm, that, I'm not really thinking that it's like so... It just comes so natural, unnatural. Mm. So I'm not really thinking of that as being important. Oh. But, it, but I think that I relate to him in that. But work and fun are the things that I'm... What kind of fun you like? I like, you know, um, hanging out, chilling with friends, stuff like that. Oh. What yeah. kind of fun you like? Um, I think the same thing, hanging out. Chilling with friends. You know. <laughs> I used to like um, soccer, but nice. I, I used to like. Running. I like active thing. I like doing active stuff. Like I, I grew up kind of playing sports, and my family was kind of active. So I like uh, skate rink, uh, football, a little flag football. I know. I know you don't <laughs> like flag football. Beta football. <laughs> flag football is when you put the flag on, and then you get the ball, and then you have to run over. And give it to the person. They can't touch you. <laughs> right? It's not that beta. <laughs> <laughs> but it's something like that, right? You can't. It's a little the, aggressive, though. A little aggressive. The person that has the ball can't be touched. No, they can't be flags. touched, but you got to pull the flag. You have little flags on you your You can't legs. touch the person. You have to pull the flag. Right. You can, pull you, can you can touch the person, but you got to Do you feel right. girly when you play that game? No, I just, uh, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I have to get to work the next day, so I can't be playing tackle. Beta, <laughs> beta, man. You can make a face. So it's still fun, though. So you, you like, run over, and the, the person with the ball has a flag. You can die, and then you him. give him the flag. And you, <laughs> and you run over, you go, uh, 
<laughs> you made those noises. I got your flag. You made those noises too. Oh yeah. <laughs> you have to. <laughs> Do they know you pull the flag? Yeah, you pull the flag, but you can die. You can make it aggressive. You could try. You could do like a little face. Can you really? You play flag football too? I think. But it is the. It is Billion the. Billion mail again. It is. <laughs> it the, was part of gym class. I couldn't say no. What's it called here? PE. Yeah. Why are you looking at me uh, like yeah. that? No, I'm just. just <laughs> <laughs> and so, what do you like doing? What's your thing to do? Lately, poker. I've never. Just something my roommates and their friends that I've met. They're on this poker kick right now, and I'm. Was been playing with them. Yeah, so are you Pretty good cool. At it? <laughs> I think I'm okay. Oh, yeah. I kind of cleaned up from the first time we played. It's probably because they underestimated me. They what? Underestimated me or something. And you cleaned up. Yeah. And now, how about now? I'm alright. Yeah. I'm not. I've never really played before, but it's what I've been doing lately. But um, interests that I've always had: soccer. Uh, I play music. I, Were you raised by bo both parents? No. And I was raised by my grandma actually. Your grandma. It was me and my grandma, and then. Along the way, her daughters, one of them being my mother, right? But I never lived with her. But I had sisters growing up who were actually my aunts, but they're the daughters of my grandma. And they always called me brother, so I called them sister. Right. So I, they were around the house, too. So I kind of had them growing up, but they, were, they left really soon, so I was kind of just me and my grandma for a while. And what was that like for you growing up? It was, like, weird for a while. Uh, <laughs> no, what? she was, like, she, there was a lot of, like, old school things that she taught me that were good. There was a lot missing, a lot missing. Yeah. And not only that, it was, there was, it was, it was like, you know what was weird about it actually, was I felt like I was so hands off. I feel like other people are like, oh, you know, they're reacting with their family and stuff, but I was like hands off. I was like, there's that kid over there, <laughs> and you know, you tell him things, <laughs> and it felt like hands off, I guess. So that it was always that was kind of weird, because I knew it was something weird about it. But so are you saying they dealt with you with hands off or you? Yeah, it felt like that because first of all, it's just me and my grandma, right? Right. But then my grandma would like work and then she'd kind of do her own thing. Right. And, and I was growing up there too. <laughs> you know what I mean? Amazing. So one word to describe it would be weird. Very weird. But if you want to be, if, if you told me to choose one word. <laughs> oh, yeah. But whatever, it just was what it was. What was it like? Did you grew up with both parents? I already know, but. No, I had my mom, and then my older sister, and then my little brother. Yeah, so I had two. Up until eight, when my little brother was born, I had two ladies in the house, so my older sister and my mom. Wow, what was that like? <sighs> A lot of... <laughs> <laughs> I, knew, I knew stuff like, that I didn't need to know. Uh, 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 tampon stuff, <laughs> uh, the cycle stuff. Attitudes. Once I woke up with a stuff. once I woke up with one beside my head. What? I used tampon. I didn't know what it was. I was really young, and I had three. You sisters. had a used tampon beside your head. Yeah. Why? I don't know. I still can't understand that memory. <laughs> you thought it was a. Someone punch. explained this memory to me. <laughs> Are you serious? I'm dead serious. How old were you? I was really young. Ah, probably like six or seven. So when you saw it there, what'd you do? I was like, ew, it's all that's blood. <laughs> <laughs> How did, it get there? Where you <laughs> How did it get there? I don't know. I still can't explain the memory. So when you call mama, mama, and this thing is here. No, I just threw it away, locked the memory away, and never thought about it till now. Really? <laughs> would, you throw it away? would you throw it away with? Like, oh. You picked um, it up? I can't remember. I think I just picked it up. Mama. Gross. <laughs> wow. It was like, you know you how like, wow. you pick up something gross, but you're like, fast? It's like, I barely touched it. <laughs> Three <laughs> seconds. <laughs> and so, how, go ahead. Um, hey, so you were learning about tap on too? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, and then you my you sister to used to, <laughs> no, but I used to know, <laughs> I used to know the names, I used to know all this stuff. But then my, I had, there was this thing that I hated though. My sister used to, my sister is like, she likes to, she likes the emotional type where she likes affection. So she always kiss me and stuff and all that stuff. And I, always, to, at least until I was, from what I remember, five, I used to hate it. Yeah. Like, stop kissing. My mom used to tell, stop kissing your brother. So she's always trying to kiss. It was just, um, it was just a very, a, a soft household. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. So are you a soft guy now? I think that I, for some kind of reason, even through it, um, I'm not saying that I'm not a soft guy, but 
even through it, I was still able to have like a my my identity a little bit to where I didn't like become you know wildly feminine or be switching and all that stuff. <laughs> so let me see how you switch. It's now. some. <laughs> Give us your best switch. You have to demonstrate to the people what switching means. Yeah, Some people don't know what switching Give us your best switch. <laughs> <laughs> All dancers know how to switch. I'm trying to embarrass myself. <laughs> but I clearly don't care. Uh, yeah. You want to show us how to switch? No. <laughs> I'm not going to be the only one. <laughs> I forgot what I was saying now. Oh, uh, so Sorry. you, you weren't switching with the women, they raised you, you. Oh, yeah, so a little bit. Switch. Yeah, I was a little bit. You know, separated from that, protected from from that. Um, but I did take on, you know, Mama's identity, but not to the point to where it like um, consumed me, where I be like became my mother. I think I was still kind of separated, which was nice, grateful. Yeah. But I did take on that, you know, the attitude, the blah blah blah. Right. But you know, it's gotten a lot different. It's changed a lot over time. Were you, you close see to your me father at all? <laughs> he was a, he, you said, was I close to my father? Were you seeing him? He was there, and I seen him every once in a while, but he wasn't, like, involved. Uh. But up until I was, I think, seven, we lived in this city. So you would go to my baseball games. He would take me to my baseball games, football games. He was, like, the coach. Um, and then we moved away, like, after seven, and then... Slowly, it was like every other weekend and every once in a while. So he was there, but it just wasn't like, it didn't, you know, kind of the same story. But he was there. He was there. <laughs> but they weren't married or together. Though. They weren't married or together, no. Oh, okay. But I still had a somewhat of a relationship. He wasn't absent. Right. Yeah. Amazing. And were you raised by both parents? Yes. What was that like for you? It was cool, and then I had a bunch of siblings too, and then also cousins and grandparents, all in the area. Oh, I see. And it was it was fun. I liked it. I admired my dad from afar, but um, I remember like as I grew up, I would like he would be coming this way around the house, and I would go this way around the house. <laughs> so I would kind of avoid him. I don't know if it was to avoid being assigned some chore, some task or what it was. I don't re remember exactly, but it was like a fear of him or something. Who were you closer to? My mother. <laughs> <laughs> so you helped with the tampon too? No, I didn't do, have to do anything like that. My oh. sister and my mother were, were pretty close too, but my sister was also close to my dad. Oh, okay. And it seemed like all the siblings were closer to my dad. I think that I was, maybe my younger brother and I were the most distant from him. And what was your father? Were you close know. to your father? I don't know him. You don't know him? No. You don't know who he is at all? I know his name is Jose. Jose? Jose. Jose. Jose uh, Prieto. And he's Cuban. You know, he drove a motorcycle, apparently. He what? He drove a motorcycle, apparently. Oh. That's probably how, she, that's probably how he got mom. <laughs> <laughs> but you never met him? No. You never met your father? Never, no. What's that like? Um, uh, a little weird for a while. But I mean, I didn't know it was weird. I didn't even know what was wrong. And then I kind of realized, oh, dang, like I'm missing a lot. Uh, and it's definitely like a journey. But it's cool to realize what it was that was missing because it's like, wow, it's like now I'm now because I was like walking away, away, away from, I guess, my true self or what I'm supposed to be. But it feels like now I'm like journeying back. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. It's like, oh, now it's the journey back. Yeah. And the last question is, I got to put you on the hot seat. Uh, when you first started dating, what did the girls think of you, and how was it dealing with girls? Um, I remember the first time I knew girls were into me. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the first time, actually, was because I was in this, um, it was in like early, early high school, and I forgot what it was that happened, but one girl in the group was like, oh yeah, Nick, he's a stud muffin. That's what she called me, right? <laughs> and I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> Something clicked because <laughs> I had a string of girlfriends after that. Oh, yeah? And, yeah, that was a mess. <laughs> I was like, whoa. And you, you dealt with them right? In no. The, I mean, no, you, no. You were afraid of them? Well, here's the, interestingly enough, actually, the best way to describe the relationships I've had, it's like always 
you know what, actually they're all the same. And they've always, for the first while, and now my, my relationships have always lasted too, like years, like multi, a few, like at least a year or two or three. Oh, yeah. And um, they're always really into me, like really into me. And I kind of, I kind of like dominate. And I kind of feel like the big man for a while. <laughs> and and I like I, I like dominating the relationship and I f and it it is just but then it like flips somewhere along the way it totally flips and I become a beta like the worst and they hate me and and they hate you yeah we and became just, we beta. start fighting about everything uh, it's just somewhere along the way it flips amazing yeah but I didn't know before what was happening what was it like for you when you first started dating when I first started dating um, I would get really into the girls, and then they would like me because, um, you know, I always played sports, I always danced, so they kind of liked that, so I was kind of like the cool kid, you know, to them, not to me, they didn't feel like it was to me, because <laughs> I never used to dance, I was like, what? But, so I would get them, but then I couldn't keep them because I would get too into them. Oh. So then, and I used to always be like, but I'm nice. <laughs> <laughs> and I just always think that they're tripping. I'm like, I don't understand. How are they not? I'm nice. And then I realized, like, it's just because I was nice. <laughs> oh, what, were you, what were you doing that implied that you, to you that was nice? I just was, you know, beta in a sense of just like not putting my foot down when it was needed. Uh -huh. Like, just kind of like, you know, I think, now that I think about it, is that giving that same kind of, like, portraying that same type of love that was given to me, to where it's just all emotional. Right. And then not, like, being the enforcer or just, just being, not even necessarily being the enforcer, but just just having the right posture when it comes to just being, you know, the, the man in the relationship. Just, yeah. it wasn't that. He couldn't do it. It wasn't in me. But you didn't know it was missing. Or did I didn't you know it was missing. Did you think you were doing the right thing? I thought man? I was doing the right thing. I thought I was, being nice was it. And how did you, what caused you to realize during that time that you weren't, it wasn't it? I didn't even realize it till um, prior after I graduated in, into my relationship that was, it wasn't serious, but <laughs> the first girlfriend that I had to where the role started to change and then I started to be like, because I got like, you know, a little puppy love when I was like 14, 15. And then, you know, you get your little heart broken. And then at that point, <laughs> at that point you're thinking like, okay, like I ain't doing that no more. So then I realized then like, you know, how many things that she was doing, you know, you know, to me that I was allowing. And I was like, well, she wouldn't have did it if it wasn't, if I sat there and, and let it happen. So then in a relationship after that, I started to realize, like, okay, well, I'm not going to allow those same things. So when I did that, it was working. Like, she used to have, like, a bad mouth. She used to cuss. And I used to tell her, like, I started voicing my opinions. And I was like, I don't like that you cuss. And I definitely don't like that you cuss towards me. And she liked that. Uh. And then she was like, okay, I won't do it. She never did it again. <laughs> so I started to realize, like, oh, okay, I see, you know, the dynamic. And it wasn't like I was trying to do that, but I just realized from the last relationship, I ain't going to let this happen again. Right. So when I did it, I started to see, like, okay, the nice part don't get you yeah. far. Beta. <laughs> James, where do broken hearts go? Uh, <laughs> to the dock of the bay. <laughs> <laughs> Like with you, when you first started dating. Um, well, I'm distracted because I want to bring up how Joel one time he told a story on the Hague Report, I think, about how a girl committed domestic violence against him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? The, the rest of the world didn't know till till now. <laughs> Go to the Hague Report to find out the story. <laughs> what did she do to you? <laughs> He do I want to? Do I want to bring? Do I want to bring that? No, we can talk about it. Um, no, nah, I don't want to talk about it. Watch, <laughs> watch it, watch it the Watch the Hague board. Watch the Hague board. Amazing. So you've been beat by a woman. I wasn't was beat. That on the JLP show? I wasn't uh, beat. Was it on your show? It was on my show. I know he said it on my show. In, yeah. in general, what it was is that we were having a conversation and. Um, I said some things that were inappropriate, 
and inappropriate. We were under. We, we had a few little drinks, oh, and then man. it just it went bad. But <laughs> I understand. The, I understand why it happened. Uh, I bet you do. You got beat. <laughs> <laughs> you told Harbo to beat me. It wasn't a beating. But. Have you ever got beat by a woman? No. No. I mean, not that I didn't. Not when I didn't want to. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was making a joke. Right? I was on the spot making a joke. I swear. So I, I got an interesting thing. So, Jay, right. what was it like real fast for you when you started dating? It was interesting because, like, some of the girls I wasn't, I was into, but not that into. And once I, some of them I, like, pursued way too much too early and then I didn't get a chance. And then, like basically scared them away. But others, like they would get under my skin or I would see something either feminist about them or, or dishonest about them. And I would just, at that point, just decide to just go push them to be more honest than they were willing to be. And so I would basically bury the, bury the relationship. Okay, yeah. so I gotta heat it up mm. real fast, and I want you to answer as quickly as possible. The hot seat. Start with Nick. Are you a nationalist? Yes. Um, should the Bible be taken literally? No. Do you love capitalism? Oh man, I love nothing and no one. Oh Lord. no. <laughs> <laughs> Is uh, climate change real? No. Uh. No. <laughs> Is Lion Crooked Hillary a good role model for women? No. Will Kanye West become president one day? No. Is Joe Biden a good president candidate? No. Is the world overpopulated? Seems like it. <laughs> <laughs> Just get out of LA, it's fine. Do you trust vaccines? Huh? Do you trust vaccines? No. Okay, um, Bill Gates. Is it okay to hate? No. Uh, amazing. Thank you, guys. This is the radio crew, folks, over the Jesse Lee Peterson Show. Ex-producer, but now has his own show, James Hake of The Hate Report. Joel, audio engineer, and also uh, gifted of dance.com. Yeah. <laughs> Tell the folks how to get the you. Gifted of dance. Yeah, the gifted of dance.com. Uh, how do you get The Hate Report? The Hake Report.com. Monday through? Monday through Friday and sun Sunday through Friday, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. It's, it's so, so Joel has a couple of studios, so if you're interested in dancing, he is the best. So check him out. And, and how do people, you don't have anything. No, you can reach me at uh, anchorbabiesforyou.com. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all so much. <laughs> uh, so, what? Can I comment on the flake woman? Yes. Yeah. She works for this human rights company. Right. I already know she's a communist. Like, nothing good comes from anybody who promotes so-called human rights or civil rights. Amazing. So you're yeah. not surprised you ran? I'm not surprised. So let us hear from you. Don't forget to like, follow, treat, subscribe, share. And Sonny, we have excellent merch on the fallerstate.tv, all right? Thank you, folks, and I appreciate it. I just, we had nothing else to do, so I want you to meet the staff. All right? Thank you so much. Next time on The Fallen State. You would never love a man that supports Donald Trump. I'm just saying that I don't want to be romantically involved. I felt post-Trump stress disorder. <laughs> so would you find me a date? I can absolutely find you a date. Oh, yeah? But it might be in Orange County. I can't imagine myself going online for a date. It just seems so unmanly. A lot of people are very busy with work, and they don't have time to go out. You gave uh, baby boomers advice on dating. They're divorced and raise their children, and they have empty nests. So the boomers are joining dating apps in record numbers because they don't want to be this odd person at a dinner table or not get invited to parties. So they're not satisfied being around their children or grandkids. It can be kind of lonely. The boomers are also looking for sex, by the way. They would like to have a sexually healthy relationship. Come on.
Thanks for watching The Fallen State. We need your continued support. Donate to my nonprofit here. Subscribe and like the videos here. And tell everybody and their mama about the show.